mental level, the variations are quite tricky sometimes. So really for beginners learning a segmentectomy, what are your personal tips for learning the anatomy other than just reading textbooks? Are there any specific things that a beginner should do? Well, I think what they can understand from uh, our video presentation is that the first tip is using as much as possible a 3D model and study this model preoperatively and intraoperatively. So, of course, th this has some constraints. This is uh, sometimes it has some cost depending on the software you, you are using. But um, I think it's much better to, to use a preoperative model. So this is the, the, the first tip. But the second tip is that you cannot rely only on the 3D model because uh, sometimes even if you have a very good model during the procedure, you get lost. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason you get lost is that um, sometimes the, the model looks very much like the normal anatomy, but sometimes you have either fibrosis or lymph nodes that you didn't expect. And also there are some variations in the length and diameter of the uh, bronchovascular elements between the, the model and the interoperative views. So even if you have a good models, sometimes you, you don't know very well where you are. Um, so you do emphasize this need for preoperative planning, and that is absolutely key. But as you just mentioned, very often intraoperatively, what you see on table can differ somewhat from uh, from the preoperative images. So do you have any uh, specific uh, tips for the intraoperative side? Are there any tools that you can use intraoperatively? Uh, for example, any on-screen imaging? Or does 3D printing help? Are there any tools that might help that? Uh... Well, I, I was expecting this question. I, I don't know if it's if it's the place to show a few seconds of the technology we are we are using now. Um, of course, you you can use three D printing. This is sometimes we have been studying in the department. Uh, in my mind, it has many limitations. Uh, the the first limitation of three D printing model uh, in the operating room is that so far, as far as I know you have no model that you can sterilize. So you, you have to put the, 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 the 3D printing into a plastic bag or something similar, which is not convenient at all to, to look at during the, the operation. Uh, uh, and if you are operating in a dark room, as, as we do, you have to light the room to, to see the, the, the 3D printing. So it's, it's not perfect. But. But I think some surgeons like it, but I don't like it so much. But uh, I think the real breakthrough now is the use of um, mixed reality with uh, exposure of the model. Um, and if I can share my screen, I don't know if it's possible during this webinar, but I can show you a few uh, seconds of this technology we are uh, evaluating in the operating room, which is really excellent because you have the model floating uh, uh, around you. And if you don't want the model anymore, you, you shut your, your head mounted display. And mm -hmm. that's quite nice. So that brings me to the third tip is that even if you have a good model, good 3D model, you have to perform this procedure uh, with an extensive dissection of the elements in the fissure so that you have a very good exposure and clear view of uh, all the vessels uh, and, uh, and bronchi. So just not, not rely on the 3D model, but um, perform a good dissection in, in the fissure. And I think for this surgery, there is no place uh, for so-called uh, fissureless technique. This should be a fissure-based uh, technique. And I hope this is something you can understand if you watch the video. To together here tonight, we, we have such a wealth of experience. So I just want to ask the other speakers, what are your experiences with, uh, with the preoperative and intraoperative uh, visualizations?